<clears throat> Heather Chrisman, and um, I've lived in my house for almost 40 years, uh, so long-time resident and, and activist there. Um, I feel that Lake Oswego at this point has an aging population. Um, I heard that next to King City um, the most. But anyway, an aging population, many of them want to stay in Lake Oswego, uh, but not in their large home. And I feel that the foothills development that would come uh, uh, from the uh, streetcar would be a great opportunity to live in a condominium, uh, particularly with the streetcar connecting in to all the opportunities uh, available in the Portland area. Um, not only the foothills development, but the neighborhood in the area that the streetcar, neighborhoods in the area where the streetcar would serve, uh, as my neighborhood is. There's a lot of neighborhoods right near uh, where uh, they are looking at the uh, streetcar coming to an end. When the development in the South Waterfront, particularly at OHSU, people want to live, as John said, where they can easily get to work. Uh, also, people that are active at Portland State University, the students, uh, the professors, the employees, as well as people wanting to come to uh, Portland businesses. I think the streetcar helps Lake Oswego meet its density requirements um, because with the 177 acres it would develop uh, many more living units if there were a streetcar involved. And this protects a lot of the farmland from around Lake Oswego from development. Last week, we had an open house to uh, hear the Foothills District Framework Plan hosted uh, by uh, Williams, Dane, and White, who was hired by the city of Lake Oswego and the local property owners. And there were at least 120 people attending the meeting and judging from the discussion and the questions, they were very supportive of the streetcar. So, thank you. Thank you, both Vic uh, Reamer and David Darling are our next presenters. Oswego and have for about uh, eight or nine years, and I support the the streetcar option to the uh, Portland to Lake Oswego Transit issue. And I, I think the general comment I'm going to make right off the bat is that I support it for one very specific reason, and that is I'm tired of the dollars that are being spent to throw asphalt on the ground to support an infrastructure that's really we can't afford it anymore. I mean, we can't afford to have more cars on the street. We can't afford it from an environment point of view. We can't afford it from a cost point of view to the average person. We need alternative transit options. And Portland has been a city that has done that for years. I mean, you have massive bike transportation system here that is great. You have one of the most renowned max lines and light rail and stuff like that. Streetcar to me represents a case where we move south along 43 and allows you the option to then connect east and west from there or on south to to uh, Westland and to Oregon City. I don't think if that's there that you're going to have that option to do it. Um, I think it's, like I said, it's right from a regional transit perspective because that allows that link to occur. And if you don't have that link, then there, what reason is there to connect east and west through Lake Oswego? There isn't. Um, it provides jobs. We need jobs. Even if it's 13 or 1,500 jobs, we need jobs. And it just seems to me that that's a logical way. And finally, it supports the foothills development. And I live in a neighborhood right near where that will terminate. My neighborhood is under pressure to increase density because of requirements in Metro to account for, you know, for, for people moving into the area. With Foothills development, that density requirement can be absorbed, part of that density requirement can be absorbed in Foothills. In my neighborhood, which is currently now 72% uh, multifamily, in Old Town, in the original district, like a swigo won't feel that pressure. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. 